Hello everybody, this is uh, Vincent. Hope I'm not going to be over-modulating on this phone. Never <laughs> can't trust smartphones sometimes. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about my, kind of my latest acquisition here. Uh, from our friends over at eBay, you know, uh, I found this Yamaha KXW952 uh, dual wall cassette deck. Two motors per uh, transport uh, amorphous record playback head. Uh, so it's going to do metal tapes fairly well if you can find them and actually afford them. Uh, they're very expensive. Most of the time I'll be running type 1, type 2 tape uh, through this guy here. Uh, what you will call ferrex and uh, typ typically your cobalt dope ferrex for type 2. Uh, that's going to be running on this guy. You got Dolby B, you got Dolby C, HX Pro, all the usual suspects. Um, the thing that really makes this deck unique is the ideal that uh, you got two cassette decks in one chassis. That's right. Um, I mean, two full discrete tape decks. Uh, usually on a double weld deck, uh, one deck is a, is a play machine and the other one's a record. Uh, and you usually common off the same input output uh, uh, array. This one here has two discrete inputs and outputs, one for each deck. So literally each one of these is its own cassette machine. Totally autonomous uh, from the other one, if you'd like. Uh, running off a common supply, a common power supply, I should say. Um, the thing that really impresses me about this machine uh, is just the overall execution. I won't even get into the features at all yet. Um, it's just uh, just beautifully well done. Uh, I've had other cassette decks in the past, uh, uh, but this one for its price point, uh, I think it really hits above its weight class. Uh, details like an anti-resonant sub-chassis that's underneath the or just right above the floor plate. Uh, the Quell unwanted resonances. It's a nice detail. You know, I expect things like that from a Pioneer Elite with their honeycomb uh, copper sub four chassis. It's kind of kind of detail I expect. Uh, control layout, kind of what you expect. You know, there's no big surprises here. You're gonna notice here this thing called play trim that allows you to adjust kind of the treble response of the cassette deck relative to the other cassettes you might feed it uh, from other tape machines you might record from. Okay, like a a Nakamichi, uh, which uses pre-1981 uh, IEC uh, equalization. Yeah, that's right. That's the reason why Nakamichi tapes don't sound the same uh, in your TIAC or Yamaha or what have you, uh, because they held on to that standard for the equalization. This one, of course, uh, follows the post-1981 uh, IEC equalization curve. So, really strong uh, machine overall. Doesn't use a lot of luxury uh, features. It just relies mostly on just raw performance, which I totally agree. You know, it, it promises uh, 20 to 20K uh, using uh, metal particle tape. Is that believable? Yeah, it could very well be. Uh, it's possible. And that's, uh, that's pretty good performance for a, uh, you know, a dual weld deck. You know, uh, 74 dB, uh, I believe, signal to noise uh, using C. I typically don't use noise reduction because I like this to be cross compatible with all my machines and I've uh, never really been a big fan of the pumping and breathing that Dolby usually gives you anyway. Uh, so I, I kind of leave it out. I'm kind of a little bit of a purist. But uh, as you can see, the excellent condition. Uh, the guy that I purchased this from is a, is a technician. And uh, he's gone through it. And uh, really, uh, really well done, I, I have to say. I typically have had really good luck, you know, getting cassette decks in the past. I try to do his uh, best shopping uh, as I possibly can, the research and everything, you know, how's this guy going to pack this thing and everything. And uh, he packaged this one here uh, exquisitely. I mean, high density foam, kept the trans kept the whole thing from just moving around during transportation there. Uh, <laughs> even an old 1970s vintage uh, uh, receiver box that was in absolutely mint shape. So I, <laughs> I usually don't get excited about a box, but hey, there you go. Uh, but really tickled pink uh, with this machine here performance wise uh, I can't fault it. Uh, it is it better than my Nakamichi is it better than a Tanberg is it better for any of those things well no okay but it's it's definitely I gotta say you know when I, I look at those guys as nine 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 tenths ten tenths uh, I, this guy is easily seven eight uh, that's pretty doggone good uh, most double wells are just absolutely forgettable here wow flutter machines uh, they just really don't bring your uh, tapes out in the best light uh, but this one here it might be part of the exception to the crowd you know like the big uh, uh, ES series uh, uh, dual wells that are un unattainable these days <laughs> by Sony 
Uh, the Tascam 322, which is also unattainable. I, I saw one is anywhere from between 600 and one guy wanted $1,200. don't think he's really going to get that, but it wasn't supreme shape. Uh, and they're just kind of like the last watering holes of uh, great dual decks. Uh, the Iowa 909 is another one. It's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's going to be one of the very few rare decks where the right-hand deck is a, a three-head. Yes, get this, a three-head deck. Uh, on the right uh, right deck well, uh, the other one would be standard auto reverse two head. Very unusual uh, configuration there. That's also uh, right up there in the unobtainium land as well too. But uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, sound checks on this guy here pretty soon, and uh, I'm going to see uh, share with you um, how this guy performs. Uh, but so far, uh, very well uh, impressed with it. Uh, just a lot of uh, a lot of uh, detail that they paid attention to. Uh, don't really expect that. Um, if memory serves, something like this, uh, I think in the 90s, was selling around 500 something dollars. So not really outrageous, you know, uh, considering uh, you know, what you can get in the world of audio. Your Nakamichi Dragons, uh, your TCD 3014s, your 910s, 920s from Tanberg, your 710s from Revox, or your B215 from Studer. Very reachable. Um, <laughs> these are hard to find, I also found out too. I, I got one here that uh, definitely was the best of the lot. Um, could I recommend this to anybody who's wanting to start out and said, hey, I only want one deck. Well, if I can tell you to get a good one and you happen to get an extra deck in the mix, um, I don't think you'd be too upset. So uh, this one here, the Yamaha KXW952, um, a definite recommended. You know, uh, always make sure, it's like anything else is mechanical, that everything about it is 100% sound. Uh, especially if you're not a technician and you're just starting out, um, you know, be aware that you're buying something that's very mechanical, it's very involved. It's not like, say, buying an SD card uh, recorder, things like that. I always recommend folks that, hey, if you can get yourself a recorder, you know, get yourself a nice little uh, handheld uh, portable, like a Tascam, Fostex, or what have you. Uh, I think you'll be a lot happier. Uh, but if you like that vintage sound of analog and you kind of want to get into it, you know, it's just like vinyls hasn't gone away. It's a matter of fact doing very well. Um, by all means, because uh, that's a great way to go. Reel to reel uh, is wonderful, but it is going to be a lot more expensive and it's going to be harder to get the tapes. So uh, keep that in mind. And speaking of tapes, you know, uh, briefly before I go, uh, kind of get uh, into falling in love with uh, ferric oxide tapes. Uh, your high bias tapes are becoming more and more rare. Or what do you call it? your type 2 tapes? Type 1 is going to be kind of your friend. A lot of good tapes out there, so uh, don't. Uh, don't get locked in, uh, just uh, type 2. There's some good, good cobalt dulped uh, ferric tapes out there uh, that'll, that'll rival a lot of uh, type 2s. Uh, matter of fact, there are even some type 1s that uh, gave metal a rough time. And metal tape is just absolutely unobtainable. So I appreciate you watching. I kind of talk a little bit longer than I expected, but just really enthused by uh, this wonderful machine. And uh, hopefully, we'll be uh, getting a video out for you all real soon. So appreciate you watching. I thank you so very much, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye.